realize what a fool you are. But you got it coming. You have any idea how dumb you reveal yourself? That thing's gonna feel so fine. Check, 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 check. Okay, welcome back to the Brutal View. Today will just be Brute. It will not be Splitch. We could not get together this weekend. But uh, one of the upsides to that is I get to record a day before. So it is March 29th, 2022, Tuesday, and Will Smith happened, and Chris Rock. Now, um, this episode, since it is me solo again, I am probably going to play a video game at the same time, because that helps me uh, keep the conversation going, instead of bouncing it off of someone, but... We got to jump into it, right? We got to talk about it. Um, I mean, there's so many jokes and shit that can be fired off and said already. I guess I can start with just the background info. So the Oscars of 2022 or 2021 occurred. And, you know, all the celebrities were there. It's a yearly event. Shit happens all the time. I believe this is the same Oscars that Ricky Gervais normally does. Um, And he actually said last year that because of how foul and difficult his jokes were and he always gets ridiculed and he's tired of people that he would not probably be welcomed back again. Now, if you saw Ricky Gervais's things last year, he shit on pedophilia and all the sex marketing and Weinstein and all the fucking shit going on in Hollywood. And now he's not back. I want to see surprise. He hasn't been fucking suicided by the government, but yeah, unfortunately, um, Ricky Gervais wasn't back. I don't even know if I'm saying, is his name Ricky? Why am I saying Ricky? For some reason that sounds wrong to me, but it's the, (laughs) the British comedian. God, I hope he's British. I don't know if he's British. He's from Europe. I know that. Pretty sure it's Ricky Gervais. Dude who was the office before the office. The OG of the office. But regardless, um, Chris Rock hosted them this year. Or at least he didn't host them, but he had that, that foul speech that Ricky Gervais always does. Now... (laughs) I mean, everyone's seen the video at this point, right? We know what happened. And I guess for the people who don't, Chris Rock, the comedian, actor, actor actor-comedian, made a joke about... and, And for me, honestly, I thought he made a joke like shitting on Will, like, oh... You know, your wife fucked August and wanted to fuck Tupac and all this fucking bullshit and... That's what he got mad at, which again has been publicized, has been all over the internet, has been everywhere, but that wasn't what he was mad at. He made a joke about G.I. Jane, the movie, because in the movie G.I. Jane, the the female actress, which I believe is Demi Moore, I can't remember though, uh, has to shave her head like all other military figures do, and you know, she looks like bald. So Chris Rock made a joke, which I actually thought wasn't, you know, it wasn't hilarious, but it wasn't like unfunny. It wasn't just out of nowhere about, you know, her being bald. And, um, you know, I guess she, she has alopecia or suffers from alopecia, which is a, a hair thinning disease to my knowledge. I don't, I don't know all the background of it, but I know that that is a legitimate, uh, disease, but, I mean, it's such a dumb joke to get mad at, 
why hit someone over that type of a joke? Like, I've always been a huge Will Smith fan, and... I mean, he's made jokes like this in fucking movies and shows and... Like, the first two Bad Boys movies, I feel like he made a bunch of jokes like that. I feel like in... in not Rush Hour. Um, Men in Black, he's made he's made some... I don't want to say untasteful jokes, but the jokes that haven't been any worse than what Chris Rock said about his wife. There are no jokes that you should get angry over, especially physically. So, like, Chris Rock says the joke at first, and he says she looks like G.I. Jane because of her hair. Obviously, it upset her a little bit, but Will Smith laughed. So he got the joke, I think, unless that was just, like, a nervous laughter, which obviously happens too um it could have just been you know completely not hearing it fully maybe something along those lines um i don't know i just i don't understand his thought process behind it to be honest i don't understand i just don't understand it i guess so yeah he he slapped chris rock over a joke that wasn't bad now, why didn't he try to fuck up August uh, Alsimes, Alsin, I forget what his name is, August something? Uh, the dude that Jada Pinkett Smith actually admitted to sleeping with and cheating on him with, you know, adultery, to, to by definition, <laughs> um... I don't. I, I just don't get the whole situation. I don't get why he was so upset over that dumbass fucking joke. Uh, the security didn't do anything because honestly, I mean that's something I'll give them leeway on. Like it looked scripted. It didn't look fucking real. It looked hella scripted. But I mean, you can tell from watching the uncensored versions that was not scripted. Um, I know, like the. Uh, the 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 version we see in America, which I think just had that delay on it effectively, that there was one camera angle that from behind looked like, okay, he didn't hit him. He actually just, you know, they like acted it out. He was smiling, but no, 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 no. When you look at the actual, <laughs> when you look at the other camera angles from the international uh, screenings, viewings, it's you can hear the slap. You can hear <laughs> Chris Rock's response. He's just like, he's looking at him. He's smiling. He doesn't know what to expect. Then Will Smith just open hand, like, bop, mad hard. And Chris just goes like, whoa, shit. Will Smith just slapped the shit out of me. And then continues to say, Will, it was a fucking G.I. Jane joke. And Will's like, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. <laughs> like... I don't know. I like playing devil's advocate and I like debating both sides. So here it is. I think y'all, and by y'all, I mean us, we, everyone, we can't be mad at him for fucking doing something because we've been shitting on Will for 10 fucking years about the Jada shit. We've been shitting on him for so long because of this whole situation. Like, I don't know. We're like, oh, yeah, your wife's constantly getting fucked, can't do this, this, and this, you you fucking pussy, and he's doing all that, and I don't think it's ever really affected him, like, his life's on blast, you know, like, he has interviews putting his whole personal shit on blast with his open relationship marriage, and just has to deal with everyone constantly shitting on him, probably his family, too, <laughs> you know, like, friends in real life, never mind internet friends, and then... I don't know. Maybe Chris Rock just said the one thing that finally made him snap. Maybe he's just like, all right, fuck this. I'm done. I, I can't take this shit anymore. And he just fucking, he went off on that one thing. And I mean, again, I don't know how we can really blame him for it. We can't really spite him because we've been shitting on him for 10 fucking years. Like, oh yeah, he's going to snap at some point. Like eventually he's, he's going to get pissed. He's going to do something dumb. And he did. I don't know. People think that he should be like getting arrested and charges should get pressed. Look, he open hand slapped him, you know, like it was clearly a, hey, shut the fuck up about my wife. I'm done with this shit. This is me putting my foot down. And I doubt people are honestly going to like, you know, 
I doubt people are going to just openly attack his wife like that whenever they get a chance to now. But I will say that, again, they're just jokes. Like, I think comedians that pull back on it afterwards are pussies. And they're not really comedians, you know? Like, I've seen so many jokes already. The Bobby Lee's like, yep, the Oscars are back, baby. This is what we've been waiting for. It's hilarious because, like, it's I, – I don't want to say true, but we – Low key, don't care or watch the Oscars at all until there's a Ricky Gervais speech that puts everyone on blast or something like this happens. Like the public does not fucking watch it, you know. Like it's really for movie critics and and buffs and shit like that. People in the industry. Um, I don't know. I see people saying like, oh, like sh- the wife's had so many other people's names in her mouth, but Will smacks the one dude who's just telling a joke about it. Like, why didn't he fight everyone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny, I get it. Hilarious, but. Again, I, I just feel like y'all pushed Will too much. Uh, we did that. I you know. I, I definitely part. I, I took. A, I was a part of that whole thing as well. I definitely shit on him hella hard. Um, and I'm probably wrong for that too, but I don't know. The celebrities can't be sensitive over jokes like this. And Chris Rock could have went so much worse, like so much worse, uh, and he didn't. You know, there was a very fucking simple, not aggressive joke that Will Smith got way too upset over. And, uh, hey, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, uh, alopecia ain't that fucking bad. You know, I know mad fucking girls with weaves and, and mad girls that have that same issue. They have issues like this and they live with it and they're fine with it and they're happy with it. They're happy about themselves and they don't fucking... I don't know. Just because you're a famous celebrity, you get like some fucking special treatment. And oh, like I, I talk about how it bothers me as a famous person with alopecia. You know how many fucking famous people have alopecia that just aren't open with it? You're just the only one who's open with it. Like, I mean, God, I know. I, I feel, think I remember Halle Berry saying something about uh, that like fucking decades ago, but she just was like rich enough where I don't know. She got some treatment for it. I don't know. I don't know. And I, I'm probably not smart enough to speak on it either, but it's not that fucking like <laughs> it's such a dumb thing to get mad over. Like grow up. I don't know. And again, that's me playing both sides because I don't think either of them should have been mad. I think they're being pussies. But again, on in Will's defense, we've been fucking pushing them this entire time. I just don't know what you expect. Like one day he's gonna snap, and this is him snapping. What do you want from him? You know, what What do you expect? Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't know if I should spend too much time on this because I feel like me and Ruben or whoever I pod with next is going to get in, break it down a little more. Maybe we'll have some more jokes and stuff at that point too. But right now, like, it is not that big of a deal. It's really not. Um, and God, the memes, the jokes, rappers, movies, like this is, it's going to be a historical moment. This is... Another Kanye uh, sl- snatching the mic from Taylor Swift. This is another one of those. Like, yeah, this isn't going to be over. I can guarantee that. And this is definitely historical. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I-, I think I'll get off that for the time being. I do want to say the rest of this episode uh, is probably going to be Marvel-based. And I say that because... I don't really have much else to talk about, and again, without having other people, I don't like bouncing stuff off of like just me alone. Uh, you know, I have some dumb jokes, but again, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. Which again, no one listens to this, but like, I want to know if comedy podcast is something I should even pay attention to at this lane because we're not just a comedy podcast. We do random shit. We're both very big music fans. Uh, we just have our business lanes and everything else. I know when Tosta was on, we were very big comedy based and we actually tried bits and jokes like every episode, but I, I don't even have time to write that shit nowadays. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'll just say I miss having 
lady friends instead of just guy friends because you ask your guy friends for just one blowjob and they run away like it's the end of the world. So I don't know. I guess guess lady friends are better in that aspect. Either way, um, I do want to talk about a few other random things. And by random, I do mean Marvel-based. So um, one thing that I keep seeing is the Moon Knight trailers. And... Uh, for most Marvel people, and um, you know, I'm probably a bigger Marvel fan than most people I know, most people I meet. But I'll say there's definitely a cult fan base out there, and um, they are much. I'll say this: Moon Knight to me, I I didn't really know who he was. I I don't really know what the character is. So this is kind of all new to me. I haven't seen much of him in the comics. Um, I feel like I've seen that costume before but i don't remember where or how i don't remember uh where the costume came from so but it looked badass um i know that the premise of the movie is uh similar to split with um james mcavoy great fucking actor by m night shamalama ding dong and split is about a you know a character who has multiple personality disorder and one of his personalities is this beast godlike creature which has super strength and can bend the limits of uh of uh, pretty much they can test true limits of manpower and strength and everything it's not just um what people can go by Sorry, I was just killing something in this game. <laughs> it's not um like they go past human strength, regular strength, and they say that this this beast character in Split that James McAvoy turned into, one of his split split personalities had super strength. This Moon Knight character is supposedly a very similar premise where each version, each split personality of this character has different storylines that are all kind of bent on this chaos and it seems like this chaos that is within him i'm sure it's family based or, or it is it's hereditary to some degree um like he can kind of capture it all at once i don't know how to i don't really know how to word it basically the moon knight character encompasses all of the personalities into one suit and it's chaos magic which i think is what scarlet witch uses I think that's the purple shit is chaos magic. Again, the movies are different than the comics too, so I'm not like positive on all this shit, but I'm just trying to get, you know, off the top of my head. Um I'll say like the Moon Knight character, I I love the split personality disorder basis for any superhero character. I actually like the mental disorder type of issues. Um I always was fond of the Batman villains because they're all have severe mental health issues. And I think it's a very uh, real life, like something that a lot of people can relate to, not even just relate to, but it's real. You know, a lot of people um, in insane asylums have had uh, serious treatment because they've had thoughts of being like serial killers and st stuff like that. So the fact that um, a movie can turn that serial killer into a villain a super villain but he just actually has issues mental health issues is is crazy to me and i feel like that's dope as hell so yeah why not why not use that to the to the to the super villain's advantage you know um yeah i don't know i think the character is great too what's his name um oh god i don't remember his name i will try to look it up at some point too but that main character is a great actor. Uh, he is in a ton of movies, um, and he's very, very good at acting. I know he's in a lot of war movies, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I've at least seen him in like one or two war movies. I think he's in that Netflix movie with Ben Affleck and Charlie Hunnam that came out a few years ago. That was a great fucking movie. Um, I don't really know what else he's in that uh, that I'm too familiar with. I want to say his name's Isaac. I don't know. I can't remember, but he looks like he hits the role to a T. Uh, 
And I know Ethan Hunt is in the movie. He plays some type of villain with some... I think he's using chaos magic as well, which I just am not sure what that is exactly, but it looks really good to me. I don't know. Um, the weapon he uses, it looks like it's a half crescent moon that he literally, he like holds his hand up to the moon and the crescent moon just like falls into his, into his palm. He just like, goes, he just grabs it and it just sucks into his hand like fucking Mjolnir does with Thor. And, uh, well, I don't know. I'm guessing he throws it at people. I'm guessing it generates chaos magic. I don't know. I'm I'm very curious to see what that's like. I know Marvel, like, God, everyone knows Iron Man and, and Captain America. I don't say everyone, but everyone knows those key superheroes from comics just from playing, like, video games and stuff like that. Now, not many people know, like, they're really branching into, like, like Miss Marvel, and that's what I want to talk about next with, with uh, Captain Marvel. Not many people even know Captain Marvel, never mind Miss Marvel, or like the Scarlet Witch and shit like that. So the fact they threw those into the movies and people love them is good. I just hope they can keep landing with new superheroes. Um, like, I feel like, again, there's a lot of people that don't even think... Uh, they they never knew who Vision was or or any of those characters before seeing the Marvel Universe... And now that they've seen the Marvel Universe, they love them. I just really hope they can they can duplicate that because uh, I don't know Monica Rambeau, who is Captain Marvel's friend's daughter that that gets her that gets Captain Marvel powers in a uh, what is that show? WandaVision. She's uh, supposedly extremely powerful. She can like fuck up Scarlet Witch and. In Captain Marvel in some scenarios, at least in the comic. I feel like I remember reading something like that, but God, I feel like we need to see them in the big movie, you know? Like all the movies that are coming out are still the same characters. We don't have a big movie with newer characters. So Eternals, I think is actually better than people give it credit for, especially on the rewatch. Um, it opened a lot of shit. Like there's a lot of world ending type situations that can happen that just isn't all based around the Avengers, which I thought was cool, but they didn't really introduce any new characters. Like, I think those Eternals characters will be in the movies now, but they can't be Avengers, right? Aren't they like celestial gods? Like, there's no way they can be Avengers. I don't know. Like, that just seems like they're above Thor, is what I thought, at least, at least what I remember. And then there's fucking, uh, what is it called? Um... Shang-Chi, 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 he was fucking a great addition character, but that one new movie, yeah, it's introducing him into the to the Marvel Universe. I think we need to see more of him. He needs to be in these shows. He should show up in Moon Knight or the Miss Marvel show and like they have to build these new characters really well because they had such a strong foundation with those first 22 movies. I just don't know if they can pull it off again for the next 22 movies, you know? Um, so far, we've had a Spider-Man movie with no new characters. What's his name was in it? Um, uh, the fucking guy with the red glasses. Jesus Christ, I can't think of his name. Not Deadpool. Is it Dead... Daredevil. Jesus Christ, I could not think of his name. Daredevil, I think, was supposedly uh, a great show, which I do not recall watching. I think I've seen some scenes of it, but I, I got more into the Punisher show. I think that was a great adaptation of the uh, show, and I love that main actor. He's he's very good. Um, Where was I even going with that? Oh yeah, just building up characters in the new movie. So we've gotten so so far we have a new Spider-Man movie. Technically we've had two cuz both Spider-Man movies have been after Thanos. So we've had two new Spider-Man movies with no new characters. Yeah, Daredevil's in it, but he had a show, so and he had like a 4 second scene. Wasn't he wasn't in the movie. Um Oh, Ned maybe from from that universe, maybe he'll he'll develop some some power like that, but uh, even then, that's that's a bit tough for me to to guess because like, didn't his memory and shit get wiped before? So, 
can he even will will he know that he has those abilities like because he waved the doctor strange shit the ring like is he gonna know now and even like the future spider-man shit like are they just cutting mj and net out now is that just like so they can do more shit i know tom holland's contract is up but again that's another conversation I told you this was going to be a lot of marvel shit for the rest of this i don't know if it's going to get any better either <laughs> um but yeah, they're just not introducing new characters. Um, so now we're getting Doctor Strange 2, which I really hope they introduce a new character. But again, it just looks like Scarlet Witch. Um, oh, they are introducing that girl with the, the big hands. Uh, I forget her name. I don't want to say big hands, but she can like travel through the multiverse uh and she looks like she's in the trailer a bunch too that doctor strange is protecting so okay maybe she'll get introduced into it and hopefully she'll have a nice big role but i just know like in captain america civil war the way they introduced spider-man was like he had a whole five minute scene of an introduction and then he's in the remainder of the movie basically and then he's in the next Avengers Infinity War movie. Well, he's also as his own at that point. But my point is, like, they had him as a huge role in the movie. Like, Doctor Strange 2 should have a massive uh, Moon Knight role. You know what I mean? Or, like, this new character they're introducing. Sure, I'm, 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 I'm assuming she'll be a part of the new Avengers as well. But I just, I, I, I'm worried that they're not going to build as strong as a team. I, I'll say that. So... This kind of leads me into the the next topic of uh, the Kamala Khan. Now, I'm confused on this on a few different pieces. So like Khan, the character Khan that was introduced in Loki, who I'm very excited to be in the Marvel Universe, he had a huge role in Loki too because he was like the time person. He like controls the fucking time loop and everything. He was a major, major villain. Now, I thought him... And Kamala Khan had some type of relation, to be honest. And I know it could just be because of the name, but I thought there was a relation between the two. It doesn't seem like there is. And I guess my reasoning to say that is because Khan, the major, like Khan the Conqueror, or no, Kang the Conqueror, that's what I'm trying to say. Kang, not Khan. I keep saying Khan. Kang the Conqueror, I thought, had some type of offspring. And I thought this type of offspring or, or mentee or something, someone who he was trying to mentor, I thought her name was Kamala Khan for some reason. I'm probably just mixing this up now, but I know in the comics, like he fucks up iron, he fucks up mad heads in the comics uh, on certain variations of the stories. And in those, Kamala Khan, I think, teams up with Iron Man or maybe Iron Man's kid, and they like fuck up Kang and someone else because they get like super strong. Now, with that, because I'm pretty sure Monica Rambeau is a part of that team, whatever that team was in the comics, and she was a stretchy girl, and she ain't stretchy. She's she's now she's not stretchy according to the trailer at least so it looks like she has captain marvel powers and monica rambeau powers now like for me i'm like all confused because i'm like okay well why is it because her name is ms marvel and she just wants to be like captain marvel so what, she somehow stumbles onto the same shit that Captain Marvel did? Like, I'm just not interested now. Like, it kind of sucks, but that story just doesn't seem like it's going to fit. Like, how is it... Okay, so Monica Rambeau... Which I don't even remember if that's her name. I think it's Monica. I know in Captain Marvel, it's that woman's daughter. And she was pretty critical i think in the captain marvel movie she like made like a big deal you know um i don't know and in that movie i thought her name was monica rambo but maybe it wasn't maybe it was something else so if it's her daughter i can't remember from the comic now but 
or from WandaVision even, like she just stumbled across Wanda's same power and I feel like they they explained it kind of well in WandaVision, I thought. I thought that, that okay, like they got away with it. Like it wasn't great. It wasn't like, okay, this is it. This is sold. This is how we do it. But they got away with it. Where in this trailer from Ms. Marvel, like how can you get away with it again? That's, that's basically what I'm getting at, you know? Like even Wanda, Scarlet Witch, like they did experiments on her with – the soul stone and that's how she got her powers where i think in the comics she was kind of like striker who fucking made wolverine wolverine he like also experimented on them i don't remember anything about an infinity stone in the comment comics though but i'm kind of glad they did that in the marvel universe because she's wicked strong now and then like it justifies how fucking strong she is because it's an infinity stone <sighs> again then Monica Rambeau somehow gets a piece of it. Now this Miss Marvel is somehow getting a piece of it. Like it just feels like anyone can be a fucking superhero now. And I don't want to say it's oversaturating, but they got to come up with different ideas. Like why not keep Kamala Khan as the stretchy girl, like in the comics. So her, she keeps her original origin story. Right. And then just have like, I know everyone's main excuse is like, well, it's Mr. Fantastic, you know, like Mr. Fantastic is supposedly going to be Reed Richards should be in Doctor Strange 2, I'm thinking. Maybe he's a part of that council. I don't know. Um, and if he is, like how many characters are they really going to introduce in Doctor Strange 2, you know, because – Honestly, having Patrick Stewart as Professor X still is fucking bananas and gives me a lot of hope for someone like Hugh Jackman to return as Wolverine, <laughs> which I know he like vocally said he does not want to, but honestly, with how much Marvel's paying out, I I'm I'm pretty sure they can convince you, Mr. Mr. Hugh Jackman. Not that uh money speaks to everyone the same cuz he seemed like a pretty genuine dude outside of movies, but you know, money talks, and it sounds like money's getting these Marvel characters a couple hundred million, I would imagine. Like, once, like, you're in Marvel movies, like, there's no turning back. Like, Tom Holland is forever Spider-Man. Tony Stark is, sorry, what's his name? RDJ. Robert Downey Jr. is forever Tony Stark. You know what I mean? Like, there's just some things that can't go back now. Uh, Chris Evans is forever Captain America. Again, he's had great movies before and after, but that's just how most people are going to know him now. Uh, and it sucks. Like, But people do that across the board. Like Frankie Muniz is forever aging Cody Banks and fucking Big Fat Liar. Like, There's never going to be anything drastically better. Like Malcolm in the Middle is just the one thing you find him on, then they're just known for that permanently. Fucking Steve Carell's Michael Scott, even though he's done thousand better movies and so many better roles. And he's a phenomenal actor, but people just honestly, the one of the baselines is, no, he's Michael Scott. It's like, cool, whatever. These Marvel movies pay out. Patrick Stewart returning as Professor X, I think, says that. <laughs> and I think that's going to be nuts. I honestly think the first dude that played... Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards back in the first Mr. Fantastic with Jessica Alba and Chris Evans as fucking Johnny Storm. I think that they, that dude should return. I know people are saying John Krasinski is going to be fucking Mr. Fantastic, um, which again, I could see him doing a great job. I just, I'd have to see it. I don't know. But how many other characters are they going to put on that council? So like Reed Richards, yeah, he stretches. We're going back to the Kamala Khan thing. So what? They can't have two characters with with similar abilities? Like, I just don't get it. I don't. I don't know. Isn't there multiple like so? There's X Men that can turn themselves on fire or freeze people, and and vice versa. And then there's there's also Marvel characters that can do that. Why can't they just coexist? You know, like, yeah, they might be from alternate realities or universes, or maybe they're just in different regions. Maybe there's a fire person in that region. There's a fire person in this region. Why does it have to be separate? You know, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. And I think that they're trying to cater to a crowd now. I, I honestly do. So like the, this girl that is playing Kamala Khan, 
seems like a great actress, and I hope she is, but um, what what are we going to see out of this? So she's going to be in just a Marvel character. She's going to be a, a Captain Marvel character now. That's that's her archetype. Okay, I, I hope they they play it off well. But what's uh, I don't know. Just like what's what are they going to do next? Okay, so they're since they already had a Hulk, they can't have any more strong people. Or since they, you know what I mean? Like there's too many things that they're going to mess up if they start doing this. And I I just hope they don't sacrifice it. I hope they keep it, I guess, to a degree. I feel like it it's it's better if uh it's better if Marvel just goes with the comic and then veers off of it a tiny bit than if they go with I guess what they think is best. If they're just like, oh no, like this fits our schedule better. And we think this is going to fit the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's like, yeah, to a degree, that won't be bad. But eventually, you're going to try to just be pleasing the producers of the show and not the fans. Just throwing it out there. I don't know how... how I mean, God, it sounds like it's just all serious now. But I'm just not that excited about Miss Marvel because I think that's a series as well. I'm not that excited about... What's it called? Uh... Moon Knight. I mean, I'm more excited about Moon Knight, a lot more excited than than Miss Marvel. I just want Moon Knight to be I want it to leave an impression on everyone and I want him to be put into the movies sooner rather than later. I would want some big movie roles that have these characters that build them up like Captain America Civil War did with Scarlet Witch and Vision and Hawkeye and Ant-Man. Like they just added these extra movie roles for characters that were like, okay, those were pretty good. Maybe I should go back and watch the original movies now. Maybe in like the next Avengers or, or Avengers type of movie, they'll have all these characters in there and then people will go, okay, maybe I should go back and watch those shows now. That's all I'm saying and I'm sure maybe they have plans for that. I don't know. In fact, we get Miss Marvel before Thor Love and Thunder or Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is upsetting too because again, we want to know what happens after Endgame with those characters. Those are massive, like, okay, he was a major, major villain and it drastically changed all the characters we've loved for, for over a decade. What is going on with them now? I know Thor eventually, Chris Hemsworth will eventually lead off of Thor. Where is he going to leave that reign to? Where is he going to give, uh, you know, is it just going to be Lady Thor from now on? Is there a new, uh, I, sh I guess it's just Thor now. I don't think they're calling it Lady Thor, but... What other Thors are there going to be? Is it just Natalie Portman from now on? Great. If it is, who cares? Um, as long as they keep something going and keep everyone in the loop. Uh, even further from that, Iron Man, like his daughter, is is she going to be up now? Um, I know they're trying to introduce the X-Men into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I hope, honestly, the, the Wolverine's daughter from Logan, I hope they use her. She was fucking badass. I hope they bring Deadpool in. I'm not excited about the other ones, to be honest. I just I, I need to see more soon, and I hope that they can keep it good. I hope it doesn't get bad because, I don't know. Eternals wasn't great, but I think it was better when I rewatched it. Shang-Chi was a great movie, but it, it kind of had its own lane. Uh, they did introduce him into, what's it called afterwards, into uh, the MCU, into the Avengers. He's like, hey, you're part of the circus now, so that was nice. Um, I hope they continue on that. And then, yeah, these other characters, I mean, they have a bunch of new shows coming out. I really hope they bring them into the movies some point soon. I, I just hope it's something that they, they, they're they heavily considering soon. Um, yeah, it will, it will keep in touch, obviously. God, I, I since I've started this, I've checked my phone a few times that I probably haven't kept in there, but... It, this Will Smith and Jada Smith thing and Chris Rock, it's, it just keeps blowing up and blowing up. Like, I don't know. I just don't get it. I don't I don't think it's so dumb. People are getting sensitive and people are just going to get censored more and more every single every single day. It's it's getting worse. So I hope uh, I hope they don't keep censoring it. I don't know. I hope it gets better. But yeah, uh, I do want to talk about, before I wrap up, I know I said I'm doing a lot of Marvel shit, but the trailer for a new Star Wars show came out.
called Obi Wan. Now, this looks very good, and I haven't done a too much of a deep dive on this because I know Ruben isn't huge into uh, uh, or Splitch isn't too big into like the Star Wars universe, um, even the Marvel universe as much as I am. But I'll say the Book of Boba Fett was phenomenal because the Book of Boba Fett, like after, after um, you know, everyone sees Boba Fett die in the Star Wars universe, but they explain that very well in the show. They're like, oh, well, he actually didn't like he did get swallowed by this giant creature, but when he was in there, he actually didn't just get shooed up and ripped apart by the insides he actually was surviving due to his armor and then he like broke out and he had the fire thing and you know he he blasted out of that creature and then they built a show off of it well in the show book of boba fett and i thought this with the mandalorian too i thought all those took place after the newest trilogy of star wars movies so the the newest rise of the skywalker and all them with the kylo kyle ren and and the new female actress who I already forget her name. Um, which again, those new movies, they have good acting and good special effects, but they're horrible. They've ruined the fucking Star Wars movies, the franchise. Um, like Star Wars can never recover from that ever again because Spielberg and and what's his name, the other guy, James Cameron, I think, had disagreements. They both were directing both movies and they didn't just do one, did all of them, so... J.J. Abrams even, I don't, I don't remember, but yeah, I thought these shows took place after all the movies. So it's like, this is the most newest current stuff, which apparently it's not the case. So I've been reading online and I guess the Mandalorian, which is, I think probably Disney's best show that they've created, best original show they have, uh, takes place after the first six movies, but not the newest three movies. That's what I've been told. So like the newest three movies where there's like a new, again, the Rise of the Skywalker and that new trilogy, I guess, is after The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. So I don't know. I'm, I'm confused about the Obi-Wan series now because Obi-Wan Kenobi is the next show that's coming out. But obviously Obi-Wan Kenobi's dead because that occurred in the first six movies. He gets killed by Darth Maul, if I remember. God, it's been a long time. So, like, this this show, this limited series, is just going to be sometime in the first six movies instead of the final three ones. So it's before The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. In the middle of one of, like, episodes four, five, or six, I think, or maybe even one, two, or three... Are probably between one, two, and three, and four, five, six, and then yeah, before Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. Well, I, I honestly was hoping like a similar, and I know this sounds dumb, but like they brought Boba Fett back. I was, I was honestly hoping they would do something like that with Obi Wan Kenobi, which I know they couldn't because wasn't he played by Liam Neeson in the in episodes four, five, or six, and that's where he died. So that, I think, made it so like, okay, he got cut by a lightsaber, and it was Liam Neeson, so if like, even if they were to bring him back, they'd probably have to bring back Liam Neeson, and they'd have to make some exception for a lightsaber for this one-time scenario, so I guess that wouldn't work. But, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know about this series. I thought the Book of Boba Fett was so well done. I thought the Mandalorian was phenomenal. I think those both Mandalorian 1 and 2, seasons 1 and 2, were better than the Book of Boba Fett, but Book of Boba Fett kept it going, and I think it, it builds up a great season 2 and 3 for that show, and then even another show, I think they're saying a show with like Grogu is going to be coming, which is going to be crazy. That's going to be nuts. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I, it's just the Star Wars era, the the Star Wars universe now, I guess is a good way to put it, is like they're kind of in shambles. 
like they can keep making shows like Mandalorian in the Book of Boba Fett, but those shows will never be current. We'll never see them in a movie type of format because that's not like um um the most recent. Or I guess they can do a movie. They'll just have to put it in that timeline, really. But like, I was almost hoping for like, okay, so after episodes seven, eight, nine of the new Star Wars trilogy that is horrible, that they could somehow save it with like a Mandalorian character in the Book of Boba Fett because they we love those characters now. Those are fucking, you know, those are kind of staple characters now, which is great, which I think is, is what we need. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's hard to judge because I, 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 I'm not a huge fan of the Star Wars movies to begin with. Like I, I liked them when I was a kid and I thought they were cool, but I liked the games. Now I played the games off and on. I just didn't get that into them. Um, and I even tried rewatching the movies recently, and it's not as good as I remembered. So I was like, "Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, I don't know." But yeah, I'll, I'll I'll wrap up with this. So Obi Wan Kenobi looks dope. I know they brought Ewan McGregor back, which did play Obi Wan, I think, in episodes one, two, and three. So that's gonna be badass. And then. Yeah, I'm sure there's some other characters in that show that are going to be crazy. So, And I don't know if they're going to bring Darth Vader in the show. Because, again, in the movies, they were like, they didn't meet for a reason type of thing. Until, yeah, until they met and then fought, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, I'll wrap up by saying, um, Will Smith, man, that was kind of a bitch move. But I don't doubt you for it. I can't even call it a bitch move. <laughs> like... Honestly, you shouldn't have done it on stage in that moment. And I know you were probably just in your feelings at the time and people pushed you and pushed you and pushed you. So you're finally like, nah, I'm putting my foot down publicly. Cool. But you didn't have that energy any other time. You didn't do it with August. You didn't do it with other people online. I feel like other people have made jokes even. Uh, and yeah, everyone's ripping you apart now and I think you deserve it, honestly. Uh, I don't think Chris Rock deserved that. He didn't make any fucking bad joke. It's alopecia, dude. It's not like, like people suffer from that, you know? Again, I have mad girlfriends that are in their 20s that are suffering with that and they have to look forward to that for the rest of their life. Like, shut up, Jada Pickett Smith. And again, if this was a joke on Will Smith, I think fucking Jada wouldn't, she'd be laughing her ass off, pointing at him like, I get Will's just trying to defend an image, maybe his honor, I don't know. I don't think it was necessary. And all the hate that's coming, I think it's kind of deserved. I just, again, I know we did this to him as well because we've been pushing him for a long time. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll have another mature conversation about it. Maybe we'll just have jokes about it next week. Who knows? Again, this is a shorter episode because I am recording the day before. Uh, I got to uh, get back to work. Um, I will. Be, I don't know if we're going to be back next week. I can't record this coming uh, Saturday, and I know uh, Splitch is going to be out at some point too, so we might have next week off, but I will keep you guys posted. Otherwise, uh, thank you for tuning in. Please share with your friends. We're going to try to upload more shorts. More Brutal Gaming episodes are going to be coming out too. We seem to be dropping them between Wednesday to Friday, which seems to be a good schedule. Um... Yeah, we're going to try to have some music stuff coming out that's just on my network. And again, I'm going to try to have more shorts coming up, so please share, please like, drop a comment, 603-922-4074, brutalview at gmail.com. I am Brute.